Any way you perform this operation, the ana anatomical features that I described, the location of the sphincter, the location of the venous drainage, the location of the nerves, and most importantly, the, the fascial structures that cover the prostate are the elements of any operation. The open operation is a difficult operation to do. It takes a lot of training. And a young man who I trained, uh, Money Menon, uh, in Detroit, uh, decided uh, that he tried to do it laparoscopically and it was too difficult. And so he was the person in the United States who really pioneered and popularized robotic prostatectomy. So today we do um, about 60% of the operations at Hopkins with the robot, uh, 40% um, through the open operation. I really only did the open operation and uh, it was always fun to see patients um, uh, on Fridays when I saw new patients and I would say, would you like to see someone I operated on last week? Oh yes, Dr. Walsh. So a patient would walk in looking totally normal. He would say he had been in the hospital for one day, went home on no pain medication, his catheter was out uh, and uh, he was continent. And they would say, D did, you have the, did you have the robot? They said yes and his, and his name is Dr. Walsh. So the idea that, that this robot is better, there's no evidence it's better, it's more expensive. It has permitted doctors to do the operation that couldn't have done it before because the increased intra-abdominal pressure compresses a lot of the venous drainage and so there's less blood loss. So I think it's a, you know, I think it's a, it's a it, for that reason alone, uh, it's made the operation more available in a high quality way at centers where it wasn't available before.